want to be doing that. So about 2003, I had the opportunity to go to Guatemala and start on a missions trip. I was supposed to go help with water filtration and water education with a friend. And as it, as it turned out, their alto phone player got into a situation where he wasn't able to go to Guatemala and they found out that I played sax. So for a week, I got to on a missions trip and play my saxophone all over the Lake of Teetlin area. It was fantastic. We played some crazy, good, fun music that you could tap your toe to, man. It was, it was a great week. And we flew in. I flew in on Sunday morning and after a bus trip. How many of you have ever been to Guatemala, Nicaragua or like that and you've flown in then the ride <laughs> so reckless <laughs> that would be the word for that one so here we are on this bus and I get motion sick so I'm hanging on for dear life and they took us took us to our hotel and then we had to go to another site around Lake Atitlan area anyway you don't care about that so so that night we had a huge celebra we had a huge celebration it had been 10 years that they've been going down there doing ministry and the Guatemalans all gathered, and there's probably two, three hundred of them in this huge area. And we were up on this stage, kind of a stage porch of a house type of thing. And we were playing and worshiping God. And I have a, I have a picture from a few days later. That's, that's me in the hat and the white stripy shirt there playing saxophone. And so, so we had, we had this big soul. And it was to honor the people that have been going down there for 10 years and the pastors of that area to honor because they began working together. All kinds of cool things happened. And then they wanted to, the Guatemalans wanted to give a, a certificate to every single person that had been down there on the trip. There was 90 people and they were adamant. So as they were stroll, as they were coming receiving their certificate 90 people I was sitting on the stage and looking out over the crowd of Guatemalan who look very different than us who live very differently than we do it's just there's no comparison between our cultures at almost none whatsoever and I looked out and I saw them worshiping and praising God and they've been doing discipleship and they they preach and they, and they share God's love with their towns and I realized they're doing exactly what we do and man the tears just begin to stream down my cheeks as I realized all that God was doing there and I looked over and the violin player she was crying too I, I went what is it what's going on she goes I'm never I'm there I'm always I'm always amazed at the inclusivity of God's love and here's the thing like we have a tendency and if we're not careful we get real tunnel visioned I, I even though I've been to other continents I've worshiped with all different kinds of cultures if we're not careful we get tunnel vision and church and Christianity looks like look around the room and it's not that God loves people all around the world and they're, they're worshiping very differently. And we wind up with these barriers and, and we, we can wind up having barriers to other people. And let's just bring this back home to Pleasant now. Like we all wind up having barriers with people that don't look like us that don't act like us. And here's the really good news about all of this is that Jesus, we're going to find out this week in John 4 that Jesus is a barrier breaker. Jesus walked, just he shattered barriers every single place that he went, so much so that it, it upset the religious people of that day mind turn your bibles to john chapter 4 and on your devices as well there's a great app called 
version. And if you don't have you version or some app to read the Bible on your phone, go ahead. You need to download that now because I'm going to read, actually I'm going to try to read John 4, the first 30 verses of the chapter. And I'm actually going to try to read it without stopping and commenting. And then after I've read the entire, almost a half of the chapter, then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about Demas and the woman at the well. So, so to set this up, to help us understand what we're about to read in John 4, Last week in John 3, we had a guy by the name of Nicodemus. Nicodemus came to Jesus at nighttime, and he came to have an intentional conversation. He came looking for something. This week, we have a woman who comes out to the well, and she's not looking to engage anybody, and she comes right in the middle of the day. We think it could be, it's probably noontime. Last week, we had Nicodemus, a wealthy individual who had prestige, power, and position. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. He was one of the three wealthiest people, we believe, in Jerusalem at the time. The woman, well, none of the above. She has none of this. We have a Pharisee. Nicodemus last week was a Pharisee, meaning he kept rules and the regulations of the old testament and adhered to them in in all and all, all everyone who would look at him would say religious person this week we have an irreligious person we have someone that in the eyes of the of the jews that she been pretty far from god so we have we have this this contrast between last week and heading into this week Man, we have a social outcast, social elite. Here's the thing I want you to know about this before we read. Is both of these people, listen, both of these people needed Jesus. The down and out and the up and out. If we combine these two weeks, you check out, you say, hey, this come, service is kind of run kind of slow and you're going to go over and check somebody else out on the live stream. Like, like the one thing I want you to get is Jesus is a barrier breaker and he breaks barriers with those who seem like they have it all together and need Jesus and the people that they, they look like it's obvious that they really need Jesus. So let's dive in. John 4, and I'm going to read 30 verses, so hang in there and let's catch the substance of what's going on here and then I'm going to come back and make comments on what's going on. So we're not going to go verse by verse. Here we go. Are we ready? Pray for me that I don't stop and make a comment, all right? Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son. Jacob's well was I, I gotta stop. I, that's as far as like like. Notice the specificity of God's word. Those of you that are watching online and this out today, this isn't like far far away. Specific place, specific town with specific names. I love it. Okay, Ty, keep going. Jacob's well was there. So wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, "Give me a drink." For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying you give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his son livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty. 
the water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. That's kind of the verse for wellspring. Keep moving. Sir, the woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come draw water. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I believe that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came back that he was talking to a woman, but no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water, went away into town and said to the people, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and we're coming to him. We have first off, we have a woman. The woman at the well is what we call her because we don't even have her name. But we have a life, we have a life that has built barriers and has all kinds of barriers to Jesus Christ. She has so many barriers that the Pharisee didn't have. She has a lot of barriers. The first barrier she has is she has a racial barrier. She, she is a Samaritan, and the history of this is Samaritans had married Gentiles, so they were considered half-breeds, and the Jews didn't have anything to do with them. And if you, if you would have processed through the text, you would have said that the Samaritan woman, the Samaritan woman, what are you, a Jew, talking to me? She completely understood that there was a racial divide. The second thing is there was a religious divide. In verse number 20, she says this to him. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you say in Jerusalem is the place to worship. Jesus never said, hey, you're out of bounds. You're supposed to be. She already had an implied understanding that she was worshiping in the wrong place. Jesus never said anything about this. There was a religious separation between the two of, two of them. The third thing is there was a social barrier. This is really hard for, under, uh, for us to understand in our culture because men and women have equality in our, in our culture. But in this culture, there was no equality. In fact, it's going to be hard to hear. But in this culture, women were based property that were to be owned that men used women that a woman listen to this a woman could not testify in court a woman could not give witness to an event that took place which by the way makes the fact that it was women that Jesus empty tomb and reported it back so interesting that in a in a that devalued women that Jesus elevated women and that's not the message for today but as you read through the New Testament you'll see on every turn Jesus took people not just women but he elevated them and gave them the status that the God that they had been created in God's image that she was a woman <laughs> what are you doing speaking to me a woman Jesus said wow it's for us to understand that and the other social barrier was that she was immoral like she was just living around she was just sleeping around and living with multiple people and it's 
Some people think the reason she came out at noon was because it's possible that she heard there was another dude in town. Not confirmed. We don't know that for sure. But there's also some thinking that she was there at noon because she would be with the other women who would have come out at morning and at evening. If you want to have a discussion in your small groups about that, go ahead. You won't solve but it is interesting there was racial religious social barriers but here's what I want you to know about that that this did not stop Jesus from speaking to her in fact with the religious people of the day it could have got him in trouble even his own disciples recognized that he probably shouldn't have been dealing and talking to her because she could have tarnished his reputation have I painted a picture for you yet? Like, like this woman just had so many barriers, a life that created barriers to Jesus Christ. I want you that are in the room and those of you that are watching online, I want you to think back to the barriers that separated you from Jesus Christ. What were some of the things that made you believe that you were not worthy of God's love? What were some of those things? I would encourage you, jot those down. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes those things will creep back in. I was uh, checking Facebook. Um, at some point, I was with somebody else, and yeah, I think, I think it was you. And, uh, I, was, uh, I was looking over at Facebook, and they said, oh, what are you checking for? I said, I just want to see if anybody's mad at me this morning because it's something that I may have posted because that's kind of how Facebook goes. You post something and somebody gets mad at you and then, it, you know, the thing just devolves every time. It never goes well. So I paint, I paint. Huh? I always post nice, happy things on there that nobody can argue with me. But kind of tongue in cheek, I am a little nervous about that. I am a little nervous about that because of, well, there could be some barriers there. But what were some of the barriers? I jotted down some that not only her barriers, racial. Maybe you believe that Jesus wasn't for you, but Jesus crosses racial lines. How, how about the thing with religion? Maybe you thought that you were good enough, or maybe you thought you weren't good enough. A lot of us would be in that category. Like, there's no way, how could God love me when I did fill in the blank? What about social? What about intellectual? I added that one. What about an intellectual barrier? People think that Christians, some people believe that Christians, we just, we worship God and we serve Jesus because it's a crutch, because without we wouldn't really have anything else to go to. When some of the most intellectual, smart people on the planet have trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. But I'm just asking the question, what were some of the barriers? And in our culture, what are some of the barriers that people face to trust Jesus? The woman at the well had all these barriers to get to Jesus, and she even mentioned some of them. We've got friends all around us, and maybe even those that are watching online, that you have created in your mind barriers to Jesus. And I want you to know that Jesus' main idea today, I'm already way ahead that the main idea is that Jesus is a barrier breaker, that Jesus cuts through all those barriers. And listen to me, if you think that there's something you've done that will keep you from getting to Jesus, I want you to know you're wrong because Jesus is a barrier breaker. And he loves you so much that he would die on a cross for you. And then I want to say to our church family and those of you that are watching online that like it's tempting to us. Like what I was meeting with somebody yesterday morning, we're problem solvers. We love solving problems. So when somebody throws up a barrier Jesus Christ, well, Jesus is this, that, and the other thing. My natural inclination is to solve the problem and explain that when really I can't there's a lot of th there's a lot of things if we're honest that we can't explain that happened in this bible 
There's a lot of things we can't. But for one, one thing I do know is that there was a Savior, and his name's Jesus, and he loves you so much. Well, Ty, what about this? I, there was a Jesus who loves you so much that he died on the cross. Well, what about? And I always point people back to Jesus Christ. There was a day, I know this might be hard for you to, some of you may not even know this, but there was a day that we argued about which version of the Bible read all right so so some of you are going googling that now people actually argue about that oh there was a time this was vehement people protested the college where i went because we used other versions besides the king james version now some of you are like why did you tell me that I never even knew there was a debate. Oh man, it was huge. And you know what, Ty, being fresh out of Bible college, and I, I'm armed with the facts of how the Bible, I made the silly mistake of arguing with these people. I shouldn't have said these people too. That's bad. Put them in a category, get a hand, and you can control them, right? No, 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 no. But, I, but, but, but they would come and they would argue. And then the, the pastor would call me over, say, hey, Ty, we got some, uh, some people that we want you to talk to and they would like sick me on them and then I would give them all the facts and figures and then they, they walk away feeling happy that they had been persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ over which version of the Bible I'm just I want to I want to admonish you to be careful it's my first admonishment to Wellspring oh boy I better be careful here I, not, not to answer don't answer their questions if you can you can have discussions but in the end I'm not going to with you for very long there was a Jesus who died on the cross for our sins he loved you he went for you he was buried and he rose again on the third day can somebody say amen right there thank you I even got quoted on that last week say amen right there the main idea today is that Jesus is a barrier he came to seek and to save is lost the beautiful thing about all this is it's not our responsibility to answer their questions it's our responsibility to love them john chapter 13 jesus used these words i've i've been since i've been here john chapter 13 a new commandment jesus said i give to you that you love one another just as i have loved you you also love one another people will know and know why we worship Jesus look at this by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another how we love is how it's an evangelistic tool we've got going for us to love people to love people well this woman at the world, she had she had so many barriers but Jesus reached across those barriers and he loved her and I would give a side note from two weeks ago that this is grace and truth right Jesus demonstrated grace by talking to a female in a misogynistic culture Jesus reached across to someone that was very different from who who they were enemies of the Jews and he loved her but then also he shared some truth with her didn't he? Jesus shared the truth about who she was grace and truth we see that uh, a life that created barriers but I want you to notice quickly a love that overcomes barriers and here's where I just want to point out four things that Jesus did four things that Jesus did chapter 4 Verse number four. And you, you would blow right past this. But I, don't want, I want to get to the point where you want this verse, you want to start it. It just seems inconsequential to the narrative. And he had to pass. He had to pass through Samaria. Now, here's the thing about Samaria Jews didn't have to pass through, they could actually go all the way out and around it on their way to Galilee they would not pass through it on purpose they hated the Samaritans so much but Jesus had to pass through see that Jesus had to pass through Samaria 
And what I want to say about that is that Jesus positioned himself in hostile territory. You can write that down. Jesus positioned himself in hostile territory. He actually went out of his way in order to not to go out of his way, in order to engage a woman who needed Jesus. And man, you think there's personal applications to this? I think they're huge. That we, as Christ followers, following Jesus and his example, that there are times that we're going to place ourselves in territory that may not be hostile, but may be uncomfortable for us so that we can demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ to others when you go to work on Monday morning or Monday night or which, whichever shift you wind up to I want you to begin to think like you're, you are going to work to provide for your family but you're also going into a territory that someone may need to know and experience the love of Jesus Christ Jesus gave us a great example in this one little phrase he had go through Samaria because he knew there was somebody there. Notice with me secondly that in spite of all the barriers there were many he still engaged her. Look at verse 7. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her give me a drink. Now why? Why did Jesus I, this, it's puzzling. Why would is ask her for a drink do you think god almighty god in a bod jesus christ god in he uh, two chapters ago he turned water into wine did he really need a human to get him a drink of water and i want to suggest that it's potential that the only reason he asked her to get him some water was so that he could begin to engage her he, he engaged her. I want to say some more about that. So, so this is, I, I didn't practice this message. Uh, here's a little, little thing about me. I rehearse my messages. So while they look very extemporaneous, and they are, they're not out, I have a general idea of how this is all going to flow together. This is one I didn't want to just what came to the top of my head on each one of these points I just wanted it I just wanted it to just just to happen and Jesus asked her for a drink in order that he could engage her he showed incredible intentionality with loving those far from God I want Wellspring to be a church that demonstrates and not necessarily as an event that's on a calendar but as a lifestyle that's lived out in our town of loving others the way Christ loved us and engaging people, love them, that they might see and experience the love of Jesus Christ. Uh, the, our, our male, I think it's a lady, male person, our male lady, it, I, I, so delivers our mail at our rental house and then for whatever the reason, she decided to walk through the yard to the next house. And as soon as I saw the footsteps in the yard, I, I ran and got my shovel. And I shoveled a path all the way out through the backyard, all the way to the, our back door neighbor's uh, front door. So that she would know that the person inside that house doesn't know me. She only knows our names. Would know that we love her. It was so simple. Judy said last night, she goes, oh, you, while well, you're shoveling the, you're going to shovel the yard? Oh, no. I explained, I'm shoveling a path because she didn't know that the, the male person had walked through the backyard. I actually have a tendency that if I see neighbors coming in. Oh, man, I shouldn't tell this. We tell this so, so it's broadcast around the world. But I have a tendency that, that when I see my neighbors out, I might go outside just to find something to do just so that I can love my neighbors because I know I'm a people person and I love having coffee and meeting people and I love this, everything about this, but I like my alone time too because it's risky when you step out of your comfort zone across 
offer a barrier to somebody that you don't know how the response is going to come back. Jesus had no, uh, no issues doing this. He said, will you give me a drink? To, and just in order to engage her. And then he asked her to do something. He asked her to do something. So like faith in Jesus Christ, when we trust Christ as our Savior, it's not just that we believe. We give mental assent. Like for instance, I believe in Lincoln. I've never seen Abraham Lincoln. I've never smelled him. I don't know what he likes to eat. But I still believe in Abraham Lincoln. Why do I believe there was an Abraham Lincoln? Because of the evidence, right? A lot of people believe in Jesus like this. Oh, yeah, there was a Jesus and there were other prof oh, there were other religions too. But Jesus demands that we do something. Like he asked us for faith. And faith is just mental, intellectual assent. It's a fully buying into and Trusting, and this is how it takes place in Romans chapter 10 in verses 9 and 10. I just love this verse. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that's why we emphasize the resurrection, you will be saved. For explanatory, for this is the Apostle Paul writing these words, with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved there's a believing in jesus yeah sure there was a jesus yeah probably there's a believing in jesus and trust him as your savior he requires something make no mistake salvation is all on him he saves us apart from our works but we declare it when we trust you Jesus as our Savior and Lord then the fourth thing Jesus wanted to meet her real need look at verses 13 through 15 Jesus said to her everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again but whoever drinks of the water physical physical remember physical spiritual or physical spiritual Jesus is always in the spiritual the people typically were in the physical because we're, that's our human condition. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring or her, a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said, like you and I would say, well, man, save me the hassle of coming in here and drawing this water day after day after day. Give me some of this water so I'll never, ever have to be thirsty again. And Jesus Jesus heard her need and Jesus realized and knew that her real need wasn't physical water that she needed the water that Jesus could give the kind of water that springs up into everlasting life here's the thing that Jesus sometimes to meet the needs that we think we have but Jesus meets the needs that he knows that we have and our number one need is to have eternal life and to trust him as, as savior and lord the main idea today is Jesus is a barrier breaker Jesus is a barrier breaker and I don't know what your barriers are well before before I do that I, I just want to jump down to the end of the chapter or toward the end of the chapter we're going to catch last half of this chapter in chapter 5 next week verse number 39 and this is John writing we were listening to somebody preach this morning and and he pointed out that 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 there's insider information that John gives that none of the other gospel writers gives and John gives us a little insight he tells us the narrative this is what happened then he says this then he gives us a editorial comment many from that town believed in him because of the woman of an eyewitness testimony he told me all that I did so when the Samaritans came to him they asked him to stay with them and he stayed there two days and many more 
believed because of his word. That, that many believed because of what Jesus did. That's the whole theme of John, right? John chapter I write these things to you that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in his name. John gives us this editorial comment that says, hey, this is the reason I wrote this. And by the way, many Samaritans, Jesus broke so many barriers. And I have a few questions for you here, like I typically do. Number one, what are some of the barriers that, that you have to Jesus, those of you that are watching online, you're just checking this stuff out. You don't even know if you believe or you're ready to trust in Jesus as your Savior and Lord. What is that perceived barrier? Listen to me. Jesus is a barrier breaker. Where do you have barriers to those who are different from you? Oh, man, we all have barriers to people that are different than us. People that are different than us freak us out typically creep us out but that's why Jesus changes us and he helps us, us to see them the way God sees them Jesus is a barrier breaker and if you haven't trusted Jesus man what is the barrier keeping you from him I want you to know that Jesus is a barrier breaker and in sense look check this out and we're done we're done for today that if we are get this right that we understand completely how much of a barrier breaker Jesus was how much he stepped across the aisle to meet others to actually engage others because his mission on planet earth was to seek and to save that which was lost then we at Wellspring ought to be barrier breakers sharing the love of Jesus Christ Everywhere we go, no matter how it is. I, I'm, everyone's beginning to know that I'm the pastor, the new, the new pastor out at Wellspring. And if I stop at a restaurant and there's that little line in there to place a tip, <laughs> guess what? I have to give an extra good tip on there. Why? Because people will judge Wellspring Church on how I love who's probably struggling right now amidst COVID. You see, do you see how that brings that to home? That we need to find ways to love people. When we do, that's when they'll see the love of Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes? Thank you so much for listening. Worship, you guys can just come right on up. I'm going to talk to you with your heads bowed and eyes closed. It's what I do. But man, God, God has convicted you right now of something and a barrier that you have to someone else. You have a barrier to uh, someone who may be in the church. Actually. You have a barrier to somebody in the community. You have a barrier to somebody that's far from God. And we need first be reminded that Jesus loved us. He broke all barriers to get to us. And then he wants us to do that. And if you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior, man, please don't, please don't wait. And if you've got questions about that, come talk to us. Talk to somebody in the room. We want to get this right today. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for an eyewitness account by John who recorded these things so that we may believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. I believe and we may have life in your name. We just shout hallelujah. Thank you for the life that you've given us. God, help us to live this out in our lives. Give us the strength and the power through your Holy Spirit to be the salt and light that you've called us to be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen.